In this video, we're gonna be looking at the EOS M50. It's a great travel companion camera, small, lightweight, and feature packed. In this video, we're gonna have a really quick look at some of the more advanced features that you can get from this camera. Let's have a closer look. So as mentioned, the EOS M50 has some really cool creative and manual functions. You'll notice on the dial on top here, the camera still retains a full automatic mode. But for those of you who are a little bit more advanced and want to get a bit more creative, we do have manual modes within this camera, such as program, time value, aperture value, and of course, full manual. Let's start by having a closer look at what TV is, what it stands for, and what it can do for you. So I've begun here by selecting TV on my main mode dial. You'll notice that the guided screen on the back here gives me a great explanation exactly the mode that I have entered and what the feature will actually create in terms of a creative output. You'll see here two example photos, which really show the difference between a slow and fast shutter speed. TV stands for time value, and what we're gonna do in this setting is change the shutter speed to increase and decrease the time that the shutter is open, and that will vastly affect our creative outcome. There are two ways to change time value on the EOS M. Firstly, we can use the multi-directional dial on top, or alternatively, we can use the smart touch screen. Simply touch the shutter speed and swipe left or right to increase and decrease. Let's have a look at the creative outcome from a fast shutter speed. First, I'm gonna start our bobblehead in motion, and my first shot's gonna be at an 800th of a second. This is quite fast. This will capture all of that movement as though it's standing still. On the other hand, let's try a slower shutter speed and see what happens. If I slow down to, let's say 1 25th of a second, you can see in this second frame, there's quite a bit of movement, which might really help tell the story. Think about your shutter speed when trying to tell a story in your image taking. Next, let's have a look at AV. As I turn the top dial to AV, again, you'll notice that there is a great description on the back screen and also some sample images as to how that aperture value can change your creative outcome. Just like in TV mode, we can change our aperture by using either the touch screen or the top rotational dial. Let's have a look at the options we've got. The minimum aperture is determined by the lens. In this case, I'm using a lens that can stop down to 5.6. Focused in my center object, I'm gonna take this photo at 5.6. Let's have a look. You'll notice in this photo that my center object is sharp and in focus. The objects in the foreground and background have become blurry and out of focus. This is a great setting for portraits and photos that you wanna identify a specific object in a busy background. Let's try the other end of the scale and see what happens. So winding my camera up to f29 now, if I take exactly the same photo, you'll notice in playback, I now have all four objects in focus. This would be an ideal setting for landscape photography. Let's explore the autofocus modes this camera has. To change my autofocus modes, I can use the Q button to activate the touch screen and then simply use my finger to touch on the autofocus modes. You'll notice the M50 has two modes to offer, one shot and servo. Let's have a look at one shot first. The easiest explanation for one shot is it's a locking focus method, meaning as I half press the shutter button, it will lock in to focus on the object. It's waiting then for me to push a little harder to release the frame. One shot is an ideal focusing method for objects that aren't moving, staged portraits, landscapes. The alternative to one shot in this camera is servo mode. The most simple explanation for servo mode is when I half press to focus, it will continually track the moving objects within the AF box. Servo mode is primarily used for high speed moving objects. Another really cool feature of the EOS M50 is touch and drag AF. It's very hard for me to show you this on camera, but I'll explain you through the process. If I'm to use the viewfinder with my eye to frame a shot, I can then use my thumb on the rear screen to move the AF box around the screen live as I'm looking through the viewfinder. To test this, bring the camera to your eye, put your thumb on the rear screen and move it around until you see the box on the point where you wanna take the photo, half press and click. This is a brand new feature, which you should definitely have a look at in store and try when you get the camera home. As I mentioned earlier, the M50 has some great automatic features built in, which will help you learn about photography. Another feature within this camera is its scene mode settings. Turning my mode dial around to SCN opens up the scene mode, which allows us to choose between specific scene filters. Using the touchscreen, I can select between a number of different features, such as silent shooting. So if you are shooting, say, a sleeping baby, for example, and you don't want all the clicking and sounds occurring, you can use silent mode 
to make the camera silent. Handheld night scene is a fantastic feature. This will actually take four photos handheld and stitch them together to give you a correctly exposed image. It also has HD backlight control. This is a fantastic mode for retaining detail in both highlights and shadows at the same time. Moving a little higher, it also has some really simple setups such as sport. If you're not sure what speed or how to set up your camera into high speed drive modes, you can go to the scene mode and simply select sport. The sports mode will put the camera into the best setup for you for shooting high speed action. If you like to take photos of things that are small, close up and personal, macro modes for you. You'll find this in the scene modes with the flower. If you love taking photos of your food, we've even got you covered there. There's a food mode here, which really increases the saturation and vibrance in your photos. The budding motorsports photographer out there will really enjoy the panning mode in camera. This sets up your servo focus and your shutter speed to help you achieve great panning photos. So we mentioned earlier creative filters. These are found on the top mode dial with the two circles. Looking at the rear screen, we're able to choose the filter simply by touching. There's some great ones here, such as grainy black and white, soft focus. There's even a fisheye effect, miniature effect. There's a water painting effect. There's also some great toy camera, miniature and HDR modes to explore. Might I suggest having a look through this mode when you get the camera home. If you love shooting in auto, but you still want to get creative, we have a new mode called creative assist mode. Down the bottom right hand corner of the screen when set to auto is a picture of a paintbrush and color wheel. If we push this button, it gives us some very simple presets, such as background blur. We can now swipe left or right to increase or decrease our background blur. Another option here is brightness. We can increase or decrease the brightness of our frame simply by swiping right or swiping left. Also in here, we can change our contrast in the same fashion. Saturation, we can even add color tones to an image. Why not explore this mode when you get the camera home? For those who know me, know that I love time-lapse videos and it doesn't get any easier than this. Let's set this camera up to do a time-lapse. To do a time-lapse, we turn our mode dial wheel around to the video camera setting. Going into the menu system here, down the bottom of the first red menus, you'll notice time-lapse movie. We need to enable this movie. Once enabled, below this, you'll notice some settings around interval and number of shots. It also has some information around what size movie file you would like to create. The M50, I'm glad to say, creates 4K time-lapse videos. Another setting within this menu is auto exposure. Do you want the camera to do a new exposure on each frame, or do you want it to hold and maintain the same exposure from the first frame to the last frame? Screen auto off is a great little feature in here also, which turns the screen off whilst it's capturing the time-lapse. This is a great feature for turning the screen off whilst time-lapsing to save battery. Another great little feature within this menu system is an indication of how long it's gonna to take to complete the task and how long the playback is gonna be. Once you're happy with all of these settings, simply set the camera down and initiate with the record button. I hope that this video has assisted in learning a little bit more about the EOS M50. Happy shooting.